Boss America, this is Ray Olson, and I want to thank you for taking the time to join us today. And we're going to still wait a little bit and have, because uh, we've got a load of people uh, logging on to this show, and uh, I think this may be a record setter for us. And I'm going to wait a minute, too, before I officially welcome and tell you a little about our speaker, Max Bolka. But, Max, how are things in Asheville, North Carolina today? <laughs> We're snowed in, Ray. We're actually I'm, we're conducting this webinar from my home study on the mountaintops of Asheville. Oh, man. Well, I, t I heard this morning on the radio coming in that with the exception of Hawaii, there is snow in all the other 49 states someplace in each state. Yeah, I can believe that. I can believe that. But isn't technology wonderful? We can have people from all over the world. Join well, us. it really is. It, it, it truly is. And now I'm looking at things like the iPhone. I'm reading this morning. I don't have an iPhone. I have a smartphone. I'm a Verizon person. So reasons to do it, reasons to wait, and what it can do. My gosh, it's just uh, as good as technology is. I mean, it is truly a moving target, isn't it? It's unbelievable. My my kid is 22 years old, doesn't know what it's like to grow up without the Internet. Well, I tell you, it's interesting because with the people in the office here that range everywhere from my age, the baby boomer, on down to we have uh, our youngest person in the office is tw 22. We have a new, new uh, young graduate from college in here. But it's interesting talking with my son, Nick, who's 32, that runs our Chicago office, what he knows about technology, and he knows quite a bit. But then Joe, that works here in the Apple's office at 27, like Nick says, well, you know, Joe's more in tune with that. Mm -hmm. But then we go to our 22-year-old that works here, Jason, who heads up our website, our IT, and does all of that. I mean, he's on a different planet. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So it, uh, I know. Well, let's do this. I've got a 90-minute seminar to give in 45 minutes, and so let's do it. Well, let's go ahead and do it. So here is another official welcome to everyone here. We're here in Indianapolis, Indiana, home of our, we were hoping, our Super Bowl champs, Indianapolis Colts. But now we'll have to wait till next year. But it's snowy here as well. But we have a bright, sunny presentation for you today from my friend, our guest, and a real pro, Mr. Max Bolka. And later on, I'm going to have Max talk about his book, Success is a State of Mind, Building the Foundation for Your Future. The people that Max has spoken with and to, it's really unbelievable. You know, he's a veteran of about 28 years in the financial services industry. And uh, after working with an investment banker, he started his own independent financial advising firm and then developed a nationwide financial planning and investment clientele. But during that same time, he decided to go back to school and, and really dig into the science of life and consciousness, went everywhere from India, studied all over. <clears throat> and today he takes all the different parts and factions of what we do, not just professionally but personally, and helps you become a better you. Now, this is not a quick fix. I love motivational speakers. I do some motivational speaking. But too many times you go into a room, you take the time, you invest the money, and you get all pumped up for about a 90-minute period at a time. It's like a fix. But then two days later, you wonder, what happened? What did it do? Did it make me better? I guarantee you that today, when you leave, it will not just be a two-day fix. This is truly a presentation that can change your life. How to master the three M's of marketing magic. The market, the message, and the medium. I give you today our guest, Mr. Max Bolka. Thank you so much, Ray. I appreciate that. Welcome, everybody. Good morning or uh, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the country. I guess it's still morning on the East Coast as well. My name is Max Volpa. As Ray mentioned, I'm a 28-year veteran in the financial services industry, developing sort of a nationwide financial planning and investment clientele. Today, I coach financial advisors of all kinds all over the country in all areas of practice management, everything from goal setting and, and developing a meaningful mission 
a little bit of which we're going to talk about today, to uh, business and strategic planning across all aspects of sales and marketing, and uh, time management, health and wellness, the future of the industry. Uh, today is all going to be about marketing, so we're not going to do any motivational talk at all. I'm talking quickly because we're going to give you a 90-minute seminar in about 45 minutes. So get out pencil and paper just in case I say something worth writing down. And let's do it. So as Ray mentioned, we want to master the three M's of marketing, the market, the message, and the medium. That's what we're going to be covering today. You know, the first thing we want to do is define our target market going beyond income and occupation. And then identify the main points that you need to convey in your message. And then figure out the most effective ways to reach your target market. Most financial advisors have it backwards. Okay, the challenge is they come to me, they call me up literally every other day during the week and say, just get me in front of more qualified prospects. And I say, great, who are you trying to reach? And they'll say, well, anybody, anybody that uh, can fog a mirror, anybody with half a million dollars to invest, anybody who can do this. I say, great, well, what do you do for them? And they go, well, I do everything. I do financial planning, I do investments, securities, I sell insurance, I do tax prep. I said, so let me, let me summarize. Let me repeat back to you. You're saying that you'll sell anything to anybody. And they go, yeah, just get me in front of qualified people. I said, I think I can see your marketing challenge. Okay, so number one is who are you trying to reach? So number one, you have to define your target market. The more succinctly you define your target market, the easier it's going to be to reach them. And that's what everybody wants to know is how to get in front of more qualified prospects. So let me teach you, first of all, the way I teach, defining your target market. First of all, you can have <coughs> excuse me, as many target markets as you'd like, but you must be specific. Okay? You just can't say clients or people or prospects. You have to drill down. Business people, women, retirees, uh, professionals, uh, religious people, uh, new age people. It does not matter, but you must be specific, okay? You can have as many target markets as you like, but you must be specific. We're all at the point where if you don't target market, you'll appeal to nobody instead of everybody. See, a lot of advisors are going to resist this. A lot of you listening to this webinar are going to resist target marketing, but I really appeal to everybody. Okay, but if you don't give them something specific to hang their hat on, you're going to end up appealing to nobody. So the creative challenge there is how to phrase the fact that your clients come from all walks of life, including A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and here's what I do for them. You see? Now you're giving them choice among many target markets, and they can say, hey, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Okay? You must target market. And we want to define our target markets going to common values. We want to go beyond income and occupation to the level of common values. Okay, the real reason, one of the reasons why clients hire you, we all know this, is that people do business with people they like and trust. Well, I would maintain that that likability and trust factors are built on common values. What do you have in common with people? If you, uh, when I speak, you know, if I show up in Bermuda shorts and, and a Hawaiian t-shirt, I better be speaking in Hawaii. <laughs> because if I'm speaking at a conference where everybody's in a shirt and tie, this information is going to be the same, but I'm not going to be perceived the same. So it's common values, and we're going to talk a little bit about this. Okay, little side note here, be authentic, because we're trying to communicate and connect on the level of common values. So be yourself. Be authentic. Be natural. And I have a secret for you. It's going to show anyway. Who you are comes right across the stage, right across the podium, right over the phone, right across the table. Emerson once said, who you are shall so loudly in my ears I cannot hear what you say. Okay, so no matter what you're trying to do, if you're not authentic, if you're trying to put on airs, then I cannot connect with you. Okay? The more I get to know you, the more opportunity I have to like and trust you. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes the more we get to know people, the less we like them and trust them. But that's a different problem for a different seminar altogether. In general, be authentic. Show me who you are. If you're doing a seminar, if you're on the phone, if you're writing an article, all the different ways we're going to talk about marketing, let yourself shine through. Ray and I were talking about our kids earlier. That's one thing we have in common. We both have grown kids. They're up and out of the house. So it's one of the levels on which we connect. Now, I said we want to go beyond income and occupation to the level of common values. 
Why don't we want to use income? Because income is a fact. It's not a common value. It's a very limited way to define a market. It almost becomes a disqualifier. I may want to do business with you because you're a doctor with half a million dollars to invest, but you don't necessarily want to do business with me because you're a doctor with half a million dollars to invest. So income is a fact, not a common value. It's not a way for us to connect together. Income is what we cover on your business plan, but we know it's a disqualifier. If you have less than X amount of money or less than X amount of premium, et cetera, et cetera, then we really can't serve you. And you have to learn how to graciously turn down you know, unqualified business. So what are some examples of target markets and values? What am I talking about specifically here? Let me give you three different examples. Number one, for business owners and professionals, generally speaking, they're going to value efficiency, time, and professionalism. Like I said, I can't show up in Bermuda Shorts uh, to speak, even though it's the same information. So business owner to business owner, I want to respect your time. I want to respect my time. I want to give you management reports. I want to show you how efficient and professional I am. But if we're talking about seniors and retirees, the first thing they say is, hey, why don't you take your tie off? Why don't you relax a little bit? Because you're making them feel uncomfortable. Seniors and retirees might be drawn to what I call more traditional values. I like to call it the six Fs, faith, family, friends, finance, fitness, and fun. You connect with them on those levels. And then we have a third one I'll use as an example, the younger than me, Generation X. And these, these people tend to be more individualistic, tech savvy. Ray was talking about his kids being tech savvy. And what I might call more flexible. What that means is their whole philosophy of life is that they don't uh, live to work. They, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they work to live. They don't live to work like the previous generation. So you have to recognize that uh, not only when you're hiring Generation X, but when you're marketing to them. Okay? If you say... If you go to a Generation X and say uh, loyalty, trust, et cetera, all, the, all these upper ones, right? Trust, value, integrity, service, professionalism, they're going to laugh you right out of the room because they grew up, they saw there's a good chance they saw both parents get divorced, somebody was out of work, got downsized from a corporation. The term loyalty to them means nothing. And if you use it uh, in marketing to Generation X, as opposed to flexibility, I think you really missed the mark. So here are some examples of three different target markets and what I mean by connecting with them on a level of common values. So you want to formalize this process and create your ideal client profile. And I want to teach you here how to create a client profile. We want to know what kind of senior or business owner or woman or Gen Xer are we talking about. Okay, you just can't say half a million dollars or more. Again, that's a disqualifier. We want to use this, all the challenges that they face and the solutions that you provide. So we primarily work with three groups of people, seniors, business owners, and women. And the type of uh, women we work with are, they, they generally are faced with A, B, C, and D. And we help them X, Y, and Z. You see, these are the challenges they face and the solutions that you provide. This is what you can literally write down in your ideal client profile. That's going to go in your introductory kit on your website. Okay? You want to use non-financial criteria. Describe your ideal client using as many non-financial criteria as possible, such as those common values, their lifestyle, their stage in life, the level of financial sophistication, the level of required attention that they, attention that they require versus what you want to provide. You know, I've got some... Uh, advisors around the country that say, look, I'm at the point in my career, it's not enough for me for you to just do business with me or give me all your money. I want you to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And we give four client education seminars a year. We expect you to show up to at least two of them because we found that a well-educated client is a happy client, a loyal client, one that will give us referrals. So do you think you could come to two of our four educational seminars every year? So required attention versus the handling that you give it. And finally, their philosophy about money, investing, business, people, and life. You know, I think that money should be used for the betterment of society and whatever and so forth and so on. So you would write all that down. Those are the types of clients that you work with, people who want to use their wealth to make an impact, a positive impact on their family, the community, and the country, and possibly the world. And philanthropic planning, etc. So you want to connect on these levels and write this stuff down. 
this becomes part of your ideal client profile. Okay? Again, as you list all those things, now the client who reads this in your kit, who reads this on your website, can say, that's me, that's me, that's me. Hey, honey, come here. This guy, Volker, he's exactly the kind of financial advisor that serves people like us. Okay? All right, now that we know who we're going for and how to describe them to themselves so they can hang their hat on it very specifically, the second M is the message. Okay, what do we want to say to these people? Well, the first thing you want to do is be able to articulate what you do for a living because you're going to be marketing yourself. Now, I know many people in this industry still get paid strictly to sell a product. But I can assure you that if you sell yourself and market yourself first, you're going to sell more product. So you must be able to answer the question, what do you do for a living? And the second part of that message is, why should I do business with you? This is called your unique selling points. Okay, what makes you different and unique? The client is thinking at this point in their head, look, I know what you do, or you explain that to me, I like you, I trust you, I need what you have, I believe you can deliver it, but i got to be honest with you. When we get off the phone today, I've got an appointment this afternoon with your competitor down the street. And then i got this guy, Ray Olson, he's calling me once a week, he wants all my money. So with all due respect, Mr. and Mrs. Financial Advisor, what makes you different, what makes you unique, why should I hire you to do? We're trying to make a difference in your client's life, something that they probably can't get anywhere else. So let's go ahead and figure out how to answer this question. What do you do for a living? You want to avoid saying simply I'm a financial advisor or I, I'm a financial planner or I uh, sell securities or I sell insurance. Those are labels. We don't want labels. We want benefits. Okay? Instead of saying I am a construction worker, I build cathedrals. You see the difference? So put a benefit on it. Focus on the benefits. So let's talk about five different ways you can distinguish yourself, and then you can take this on your own and massage it and build it into something, customize it for your own use. The first way is your area of technical expertise. You may have some kind of technical expertise that not everybody has. So if you do, you want to lead with that. What do you do for a living? I create zero estate tax plans. That's what I do. Anybody in my state I can cut their estate taxes down to zero. And by looking at your tax return, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I'm pretty sure we can do it for you as well. So that's the first way. The second way is your target market that we just identified up above. Okay? The, the, the business owners, the uh, women, the seniors, the retirees, the Generation Xers, if you lead with that, we call that your market niche. And what you're saying is, I know more about your problems than you do. I have answers to questions you haven't even thought of yet. So when we hold ourselves out that way, we might say something like, I'm a financial advisor to the local medical community here in Asheville or here in Indianapolis. So you're drilling down. You can say I'm a financial advisor, but then to the local medical community here in Asheville. The third way is where we combine those two, your technical expertise and your target market. When we combine those two, we might say something like, well, I help doctors create zero state tax plans. You see how that works? So we're going to combine what you do, your technical expertise, and who you do it for, doctors. The fourth way to distinguish yourself is the nature of the financial services you provide. So you might say something like, well, I provide monthly portfolio updates, including the cost basis. A lot of the business owners that we work with, they don't want to wait quarterly to see how much they own. So we're the only financial advisor here in town that gives you a monthly portfolio, and we're going to include the cost basis as well, so that you can not only see how much you've got in the account, but how well you're doing as a, uh, versus what you put in. Now, this takes a lot of labor. It's very labor intensive. We have somebody on the staff, Mr. and Mrs. Staffer, and this is all they do is update portfolios all week long uh, for our clients. So. We find that our business owner clients want this kind of management information. That's why we work with million-dollar business owners. Okay. The fifth way that you can distinguish yourself is your non-financial services or how you deliver these things, your office procedures, your practice management. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, for Again, sticking with business owners, you might say, um, 
you know, I understand, Ray, that you're busy running your business from 8 in the morning till 6 at night. I'm one of the only financial advisors here in Indianapolis that has office hours on Saturday morning. So I drop the kids at soccer practice, come on over, we'll go through your portfolio. Now, I don't have to tell Ray that I don't work on Friday afternoons. I'm out playing golf uh, because I work on Saturday mornings. That's my business. That's my business plan. Okay? But I'm able to give him the service he wants, you know, Tuesday, Thursday nights, and Saturday mornings, and whenever it is, because that's the target market that I profess to specialize in. So I've got to serve the needs of that market. Another example, let's go the other way, with seniors. You might say, um, well, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, uh, when you hire me, uh, because I have a lot of senior clients, retirees like yourself, not all of them can get out of the house, especially in the middle of winter. I'm one of the very few advisors here in Asheville who still make house calls. When you become a client of ours, we'll come to your house twice a year, uh, we'll rub your feet, make you coffee, all while we go through your portfolio. Okay? That can be one reason why clients hire you. It's not because you're the best financial advisor in town, it's because they like you the best, because he's such a nice young man and he comes over to my house and we have coffee and we have lunch and so on and so forth. Okay? Or if it's a senior market where they can get out, but they've got to drive across town to see you, then Mr. and Mrs. Jones will make your appointments twice a year at 11 a.m. And we'll go through your portfolio for an hour and then we'll always go to lunch afterwards. We'll have a nice social visit. And that counts for a lot for people when you get to a certain age and you have a certain amount of money. Okay? So the, your non-financial services are the way you deliver these things. Okay? What you want to do is develop a mission. A mission is more than just a marketing gimmick or a tagline or a cliche. It really is a client-oriented, benefits-laced mission statement of what you do and who you do it for. So let's give some examples. What are you committed to? This is the thing. A marketing mission should be what are you committed to. If you get stuck, just ask your clients, well, what do you like best about doing business together? You know, how can we serve you better? And what would you like to see more of? What are you not getting from us that you need? And your clients will tell you exactly the kind of benefits that they're looking for, whether it's technical expertise or non-technical expertise, etc. So ask your clients if you get stuck. Let's tie this all together. Okay, some example mission statements. I create zero estate tax plans for doctors who don't want Uncle Sam to be their largest heir. See how that works? I help small business owners attract and retain superior talent in a competitive labor market. Now, how are you going to do that? Employee benefit plans. Okay. A couple of others. I help small business owners pull money out of their business tax-free. And we could go on and on, but I hope you're starting to get the idea and making some notes on your own about who you serve, what you do for them, and what might possibly be your unique selling points. You put all those together into a very succinct mission statement. I help seniors and retirees create a stream of steady, secure income that they'll never outlive. And just to show you that there's literally no limit to what you can do here, I create a safe environment for women to learn about their finances and money, invest their money. I help Gen Xers turbocharge their way to retirement. Okay, I, you notice I don't use the word turbocharge when I'm talking about seniors. Seniors want steady, secure stream of income. Gen X is want to turbocharge their way to retirement. So that's just grammatical. And to show you there's no different, there's no, no limits here. I teach Americans how to become completely debt free. Well, my mission is to teach every American how to become completely debt free. I have lottery winners combine the financial and spiritual sides of life. You know, you win $5 million in the lottery, you've got some big choices to make. So we're, we, you could you could customize this to say I help lottery winners combine the financial and non-financial, or the financial and the material and the spiritual, whatever you want, or to have money become meaningful in their lives. You see? There's no limit to it. And you could even say I build first-class financial bodies and enlightened entrepreneurs. Hey, I like that one. Maybe I'll use that one myself. All right, now that we know, number one, the market, number two, the message, now, how do we get to these people? Now that we know who we're trying to get to and what we want to say to them. And this is the medium or the marketing methods. This is what everybody wants to know. So let's go through some guidelines of how to come up with them, and then we'll go through some specific examples and wrap it all up. Okay? 
recognize that all marketing methods are just communication tools. They're just communication tools. That's all they are. And the perfect method or the perfect medium for marketing, I'm going to tell everybody right now. You ready? This is the absolute foolproof one. It's the one that fits both you and your target market. Okay? Go with your strengths. Okay? How do you communicate best? So when you're looking for the best marketing method, the first thing to do after you define your marketing your message is say, how do you communicate best? Are you better in writing or verbally, one-on-one -on -one or in a group, over the phone or in person? One-way versus interactive. You'll notice this morning is all one-way communication. This would not nearly go the same way if we were interacting back and forth. It would take twice as long. We could get off track, etc. I just want to hit you with some main bullet points, give you some concepts about marketing men, but make no mistake about it, it's all one-way communication. And I'm very well aware of that. Then what about your, your communication short, medium, and long term? Okay, most advisors are in it for the short term or the medium term. If you're in it for the long term relationship, what's your long term communication strategies? What are your long term methods for communicating? And we're going to find that out later on, what to do. Okay? How do you communicate best? Remember, Financial advising is only 50% about finance. That's the technical end of the business. The other 50% about finance, about financial advising, is about advising. And that requires real communication relationship management skill. Yes, part of communication relationship management is selling skills. You have to be able to sell. Somebody's got to be responsible in your organization for marketing and selling. And if you don't do it, somebody else has to do it. But it requires both the technical end and the advising end. And if you're not good at communicating in any of these ways that we talked about, then you've got a real problem. <laughs> so we're in the business of communicating. You could be the best financial advisor in the world. If you can't communicate with people, you're going to have a very difficult time marketing. All right, the second thing is consider your audience. How do they receive and process this type of financial information that you're trying to convey? Let's face it, 45-year-old life in the fast lane doctors who just paid off their last student loan and are heavy into cash flow in their career, but they also have a family, a couple of mortgages, 2.5 kids, etc., is going to process and receive and want to do business with you differently than a 75-year-old retiree who wants you to come out to their, um, their clubhouse at their, at their condo, their second winter condo, and uh, have a chicken dinner with them and spend two hours. Okay, so it just depends on how your target markets process and receive this information. Again, go through the list. Do they get it in writing or verbally, one-on-one -on -one or in a group, over the phone, etc.? If you're looking at that doctor, he may be doing a second shift, and you've got to go to the hospital at 11 o'clock at night, and you've got 10 minutes, he's going to write you a check, or she's going to write you a check, and the application, then off you go. So how do you get to those people who want to do business that way? Okay? The goal is to connect with potential clients and see if you have a good match. Qualifying means ready, willing, and able to enter into the kind of relationship you're, work, you're looking for. Able is where most advisors stop. They've got half a million dollars, they qualify, they're able, I'm going for them. Yeah, but they never said they're ready. They never even said they're looking or they're willing. So they're not qualified. And then you get caught up in the problem that somebody says, oh, Max, you're a financial advisor, great, I'm about to inherit $6 million sometime in the next two years, what would you do with it? And that financial advisor jumps through all kinds of hoops for the next two years just on the hopes of getting that $6 million. We don't want to do that. We want to be able to qualify them instantly, respectfully, sincerely, but instantly. So that's the goal is to connect with potential clients to see if you have a good match. So, having said all that, let's talk about 15 great ways to market to your practice. Number one is cruise ship seminars. And make no mistake about it, this is just a seminar, but it's a C. Now, did you know, for the people on this webinar today, did you know that you can take a free cruise in exchange for conducting finance lectures aboard ship? It's unbelievable. I've been doing it for 28 years in the business. I teach others how to do it for the last 20 years. Um, it's not difficult at all. Like most of the other marketing methods I'm going to show you here today, it's not difficult at all once you know how. But cruise ship seminars, take a free cruise is terrific. Okay, you have a captive audience. They're not going anywhere. You're, unless you're really bad, I guess, then they could jump ship in the middle of the ocean. But hopefully we don't have any of those. 
But what happens? You know, you're out on the ship for a week, and every day while you're at sea, let's say at two in the afternoon, they can go play shuffleboard, they can go play bingo, or they can go to uh, a movie, or they can come and watch you do a finance lecture on a different area of finance. How to cut your taxes, how to save enough in taxes to help pay for your next cruise. See? Same tax advantage seminar we're going to give otherwise, we're just tailoring it to the audience. Okay, you develop lifelong relationships on these things because that's what the cruise lines promote. The cruise line very heavily promotes lifelong cruising. They want you to come back more than once a year to their cruise line and go to different places and sail around the world. And you will find on cruise ships a lot of people either very much like them or very much don't like them and drop out right away. So it's not unusual at all to find a bunch of cruisers who go all over the world and go regularly. And of course, it demonstrates uniqueness. We were looking for one of the ways to demonstrate uniqueness, how to develop your USP. Well, just the fact that you're on that ship and you're the only financial advisor there for the week, you have no competition, means you must be good or they wouldn't have let you on, right? So just your mere presence demonstrates uniqueness. So that's one way to market. All right, number two is on-site seminars. So you go out, you give on-site seminars. We'll talk about where in a minute, but I have three guidelines for seminars. Number one is don't try to fill the room. Okay, it's too difficult to try to fill the room. I learned this 30 years ago uh, in the No Money Down Real Estate Seminars. I would see these guys. They had to buy infomercials. They had to rent the Coliseum or the convention center, fill it up with thousands of people, give away free gifts. Oh, my gosh, it was so expensive just to get people in the room. Don't do that. Okay? The second guideline is don't try to fill the room. And can anybody guess what the third guideline for seminars is? Don't try to fill the room. So I hope I've made my point. Don't try to fill the room. Go where the room is already filled. Go where your people are already gathering. Okay, how many of you today, out of all the people on this line, how many people did I call up and say, hey, I hope you're going to be there at 1130 Eastern Time on Wednesday? No. The room was already filled. Thank you to Ray Olson and his generosity. Okay, and the webinar people. You put all this together, okay, and you and then the you as the advisor don't have to fill the room. So where might you go? Resorts, hotels, churches, theaters, health food store, community rooms. If your target market is health food, healthy markets, healthy people, uh, health conscious people, I'd be in the back of the health food store where they have a community room. And they have all kinds of things going on there, not just cooking classes. So you can go back there and your people are shopping there anyway. So you put it on the board and people see it's free advertising. This Thursday at 6 o'clock, we're going to teach about six ways to cut your taxes, etc. Golf clubs, hospitals, corporations, go out to the corporations, do a lunch and learn. There are companies that specialize in giving financial lectures to corporations. And you can hook up with that company. They're strictly educational companies. So you get on their roster and they'll give you uh, places to go. They charge the corporation $10,000 for a series of finance lectures. That's how they make their money. You get all the clients you can eat from the seminar. So it's very, very easy. A ladies' gardening club. I put that one in there just to show you it doesn't matter where you give it. Okay, Once a week, if I go out and, and I just get 10 people to show up at the ladies' gardening club, and maybe I'm going to talk about six ways to grow your money without using manure. Right? It's an all-natural way to grow your money. And, I'll, and 10 women show up, but they'll let me in the door to talk. Okay? And three of them come up afterwards and says, hey, I like you, I like what you said, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about what you do. And one or two of those end up becoming clients. Is that, would that be worth it to you? Absolutely. How many of those could you do? One a week? That's 50 new clients in a year. So on-site seminars anywhere your target markets already gather. Go where they're already gathering. Kiwanis Club already has monthly or weekly meetings or however often they meet, Rotary, et cetera, et cetera. That's the key is go where they're already gathering. Right now I'd be doing as many bear market seminars as possible. I call them bear market seminars. Right now I don't, I don't even think we're in a bear market anymore, but some people do. And until that down gets back up to 14,000, people are a little skittish. You should be out there trumpeting every week what to do. This is the most golden opportunity you'll ever have in your career to draw people in and show them your confidence and your control and make them feel comfortable. So I'd be doing those as well. 
All right, number three is charitable events. Get involved, okay, bond with your clients, and don't just lick stamps and send out mailers. Work your way up to director of finance or fundraising. So this is why you want to bond with your clients. Okay, they'll all know who you are, and you'll know who has the money in the organization, and you're bonding emotionally with your clients over a charity that is near, a cause that is near and dear to your heart. And of course, giving is the basis for any relationship. So they will see what you're giving to the organization and say, what do you do again? And then a month later, after working together, they say, I'd like to talk to you about my situation. How much would you charge for me to come in and talk to you? Okay. Invite the media before, during, and after your, your event. They'll help you fill the room. And of course, involve the charity because they'll help you fill the room as well. Okay. That's how you do charitable events. Number four is public events, wine tasting, golf and tennis tournaments. You can set up an uh, April 15th Uncle Sam dunking tank across the street from the post office. Okay, figure out what business is across the street from the post office, and it's, they won't charge you. It's great traffic for them. Set up the tank and have your literature and pamphlets and everything outside, right, right next to it. Okay, do what you love, have fun, and you'll have your common passion. Okay. FBA Awareness Week, Industry Aware Financial Awareness Week, Industry Clinics. Go where the people are already gathering. Here's an example. You might give a lecture called How to Pay for Healthcare, and you give it at the hospital during the local health awareness day for week-long clinic. And how to pay for all this health care. You'd be the only financial advisor there. That's what I mean by public events. You can use non-competing corporate sponsors. If you're going to hold a golf tournament or a tennis tournament or something, Get your local printer to supply the napkins, the pens, the pencils, the paper, etc. Get the local sporting goods store to provide the golf balls with your name on it or their name on it or both. Okay, if you're doing wine tasting, get the major winery to give sample bottles, etc. They have this in their budget. This is their marketing budget. They're looking for you. They're looking for ways to get in front of the public to reach out and proactively do marketing. Okay. Client appreciation events. It's unlimited. I have a client that has a marina, and every day, in, every year in September, they have a boating day. Now, all the clients come out. You can take them to a ball game. You can do barbecue, opera, theater. It doesn't matter. It's unlimited. Okay, do what you love, following your common passion. Okay, but always have your clients invite their friends, neighbors, relatives, and coworkers. That's the whole point. Okay, there's nothing wrong with having a client appreciate. Yeah, you're going to spring for a little bit, a bit of extra food. But that's the whole idea. It's a very non-threatening way for new people to come in. They're coming with a friend, and they're having a good time. Okay? And if it ends up that it's going to be too much money, again, get a sponsor if it's necessary. Number six is magazines and newsletters. Now, I separated this out from other places because this is hard copy. Okay? Target your in-house publications. You, you know, it, doesn't, it really doesn't help to go into a general publication. Today, you have magazines for every conceivable need. I, I can't even explain the millions of magazines that are out there. So, but target in-house. And if you're going for doctors, the, I bet the local hospital has an in-house newsletter. That's where you want your article to be. So, and you can create articles specifically for your target market. You don't want to be here. <laughs> yes, these jocks really do know their stocks. Give me a break. Okay, this is a mass medium. 99.5% of the people who are in there are not going to be your market. Besides, I can probably teach Shaq more about free throw shooting than he could teach me about investing in stocks. So you don't have to be in Money Magazine. You can be in the local hospital newsletter or the local charitable newsletter event. Okay? Number seven is TV and radio. Same thing. It's a mass medium, so be careful. You could be on Bloomberg or MSNBC or CNN. If you have a progressive audience, you can go on NPR or PBS. But I would try to drill down to the specialty, the Golf Channel, the Health Channel, uh, uh, MDTV, Doctor TV, etc. In-house satellite and cable. Go, the more specialized the interest, the better, because now you can target it to your particular market. Okay. I'm talking fast here because we got to run. Number eight is your introductory kit. Here's everything you should go in your introductory kit. Your references, a cover letter, deliverables. Deliverables are what happens after I sign up with you. Okay? You've got to put that in your kit. You're looking for a long-term relationship and you want all my money? You better tell me what's going to happen next week, next month, next year. 
your business card, your list of services, that ideal client profile that we just developed. Of course, a brochure, a sample of your work, either a sample portfolio, sample newsletter, sample statement, something to show me a sample of your work. And of course, include those unique selling points that we just developed them. Okay, number nine is website. You're going to put the same thing on the website. Think of it as an electronic brochure. All those items we just went through go on your website and more. For example, you can hold teleconferences, run webinars like we're doing right now. I'm doing it from the study of my home in the mountaintop in Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, that's called marketing. You can post articles on your website. You should have a shopping cart where you can sell all your products and you can host forums and discussions on there as well. So that leads us to number 10, which is you should create products for your website. Books, CDs, DVDs, articles, white papers, top 10 lists, top 10 ways to reduce your taxes, etc. And then you offer all these not only on, in your website store, refer to them in your articles for a complete listing and so on and so forth. Go to my website. Okay? And you create these specifically for your target market. Now, the real beautiful one is when you use your target market's website hold to tell teleconferences, run, run webinars, etc. Offer products for sale. If you go on olsengroup.com, right, the Olson, the Olson Group's website, which is www.olsengroup.com, you can see it in the lower left-hand corner, Olson Group, no the, just olsengroup.com. You know who you're going to see on their front page? You got it. A picture of me. Ray was graciously enough to promote this seminar and put it on the front page of his website. Okay? That's called being on your target market's website. That's what you want to do with all your target markets. Number 12 is sign up for your industry association and get the leads from them. Okay? Call them first, those leads, then send that introductory kit, and then follow up. You must follow up. I can't tell you how many times people send kits and don't follow up. You, they, these people have already taken action. They've requested information. You must have a sales system in place where you can follow up until they, you know that they're qualified or not qualified. Number thir 13 is join your target markets association. Speak at their meetings, write for their newsletter, conduct webinars on their website, or start your own association. I have one lady that was in the human resources area. She had no human resources association in her town. So she started her own association. Okay, number 14 is referrals. Referrals are really the number one way top advisors obtain new businesses. It's free, it's easy, it's fun. You can get them from clients, prospects, and from strategic alliances, which leads to number 15. You've got to form the strategic alliances. This enables you to offer one-stop shopping experience through your team of associates. If all you do is sell insurance, then the best thing you could possibly do, my number one advice, is learn how to get referrals. And number two, hook up with a financial planner and an accountant and a state planning attorney because all of them are recommending insurance in one form or another. And obviously these would be non-competing planners, planners who don't sell insurance. So now together you can offer one-stop shopping to people. Okay, that's the 15 ways. If you get stuck and after all this you don't know what to do, Ask your clients, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, where do you get your financial information from besides me? What do you do when you're not working? Or what do you do now that you're no longer working, that you're retired? Okay? And what groups do you belong to and how do they communicate? And when you make a list of all those, guess what you've got? You betcha. You've got a list of where to speak and get published and get posted on their websites and do teleconferences and webinars. These are the places you want to be. They're already gathering there. They're already going. Don't try to fill the room. Show up in their room, even if it's a virtual room. Okay? You've got to develop a marketing plan. What I've given you so far are 15 strategies. You want to formalize them into a marketing plan. And what does a marketing plan consist of? Number one, the results you want to achieve. Now, this doesn't mean sell two new clients a month. This means the marketing plan. For example, I want to place two articles a month, two seminars a month, and do two cruises every year. I want to go to Alaska in the summer. I want to go to Hawaii in the winter. That's what I mean by the results you want to achieve. Okay? Then take the act, then make a list of the action steps you need to take. Detailed list of specific actions. If you're doing cruises, first you've got to find a list of the cruises. You've got to know which ones you want to go on. You've got to know how to approach them and what to say. All these things. Make a list of the 27 action steps to take. 
that's a marketing plan. And obviously, and you've got to implement and then adjust. If you do all this and you get two clients a month from it and you want four clients a month, you've got to adjust your quantity and your, or possibly your quality. Yes, you could do four articles and four seminars and four cruises a year, but you may also have to work on the quality, what's in those articles, how you're writing them, or what you're saying in the seminars, or how you're doing the cruises. But that's a marketing plan. Okay, how do you evaluate it? Your return on investment, your cost, potential, and competition. If I place an ad in the Sunday paper, how much is it going to cost? A lot of money. What's the potential? Not much. 99.5% of those people who are reading it are not my potential clients. What's my competition? Possibly a whole lot. I've got you know, a whole page full of ads surrounding me. If I take a free cruise, how much does it cost me? Little or no money. I've got to pay for incidentals. How much potential do I have? Well, if you pick the right cruise, if I'm talking senior cruise, I'm not talking a three or four day carnival cruise, I'm talking the seven to ten day uh, in the middle of winter to, to Hawaii, guess who's going to be on those cruises? My seniors. Okay, how much competition do I have? None, other than bingo and the nice weather and the food. But there are no other financial advisors on that cruise, so I'm the only one. I've got the all stick to myself. Okay, systematize your marketing process. Systematize means it's automatic. You don't have to think about it. It's repeatable. You know where you are at any step along the way. You don't have to guess. And number three, it's documented. It's trackable. So again, there's no guesswork involved. In summary, formalize your target market. Identify your target market and connect on them. Connect with them on the level of common values, going beyond an income and occupation to the level of common values. Don't forget your mission statement. What do you do and who do you do it for? Number two, develop your message. Why should I do this with you? Get those unique selling points down. Then when you've got your gun loaded, now you fire it. Choose at least three or four of those different methods. Customize those 16 great ways, and I guess I give you 15 great ways to market, and create and implement a systemized plan. So in conclusion, nobody wants to be sold, but everybody wants to buy. And when they're marketed to correctly, properly, and professionally, they will buy more from you than you could ever sell them. So I know we're running just a couple minutes late here. So I just want to tell you, I know that most of you on a webinar like this are looking for, what is this guy trying to sell me? So I didn't want to disappoint you. Here's my new book that just came out, Success is a State of Mind. It's co-authored with Les Brown, Mark Victor Hansen, and Deepak Chopra. It talks about the inner game of success, how to recession-proof your mind, how to think bigger than you ever thought possible, and therefore you can sell more. So what I'm happy to do is until 5 o'clock today, give you a 20% off on it. Instead of $19.95, it's $15.95. I'll pay the shipping and the taxes. But the, if you want that, by 5 o'clock today, you have to email me. Don't go on my website. Don't look it up on the internet because none of the discounts are on there. Email me right there at the bottom. It says max at maxvolta.com. What we'll do is by 5 o'clock tonight, we'll manually tally all those up. Tomorrow you'll get an invoice via PayPal for the $15.95. You pay it tomorrow, that's Thursday, and on Friday we'll ship it to you. And we'll even sign it for you. So there you go, Ray. That's everything we want to know about the market, the message, and the medium. I know we ran just five minutes late, but I really thank you and all the people for your time on the line today. And look forward to helping you sell more than ever thought possible. Thanks. Hey, Max, thank you. A great job. I always feel bad having you have to do this seminar in such a short period of time. But on top of the discount in the book, you know, something else that he's not selling, but we are for active associates with the Olson Group, people that are selling with us on a regular basis. Max does a variety of different coaching options from uh, weekly to daily to monthly to yearly. And we have many people that have utilized Max services, and uh, it's really worth the money. It's a coach. He's a mentor. He's someone that understands what you're going through. And all people that are associated with the Olson Group get special pricing, and Max can fill you in on that. Max is going to be with us many times through 2011, so I want you to stay tuned and watch the Olson Report, watch the emails for when Max comes out the next quarter and the quarter after that and is bringing out additional bits of information to help you become a better you, but more importantly, help you love what you're doing. Get more out of your business. Make it a true career. Be a professional. There's never been a better time to market what we're marketing. And don't forget the Olson Group. Take a look at what we have to offer. Visit us on the website at olsongroup.com. 
That's O H L S O N Group, all one word dot com, 877-844-0900, For Max Boca, this is Ray Olson, and as we always say, until next time, good selling.